Hi everybody. Today I want to talk about glucose, but it is very very broad subject. In medical school we don't talk much about it. We just mention sugars and everything evolves around the sugar when we study medicine, uh, which is uh, purpose of this is to mislead us. Before I talk to uh, go deeply into the sugar, I just want to mention a problem that sugar creates in our body, and we have labeled it with a stamp calling it diabetes. Uh, there are plenty of studies coming out. What causes diabetes? Ah, fat, that, this, that. Uh, all crazy things. Again, why? Because we just don't understand the simple things about metabolism in general and uh, how the body should be working. Who is guilty for this? Well, medical school and all these fabricated studies because the truth is being hidden and uh, we are being led in particular certain way which was given to our handlers years and years, 6,000 years ago from Anunnaki and they just continued with the same same spiel just to maintain power over us. Now we know that diabetes is elevated blood sugar. Now every cell in our body can make sugar and it can use fat to do it. On the other side, they can also convert sugar into fat. This is done in mitochondria inside of the cell. Though every cell in the body can do it, only liver cells can release it into bloodstream, which automatically now comes to us as, oh, okay, so liver is the problem. Liver is making too much sugar. What will do about it? Well, it is not coming from there. It comes through our diet. We start eating sugar. Now, everybody says, well, I'm not eating sugar. Well, sugar, there are many different sugars. The type of a sugar that cell can use as a fuel is called glucose. Another name for glucose is starch. Now, if we have a scale of sweetness from 1 to 10, which 1 is not sweet, 10 is extremely sweet, fructose, sugar of fruits, will be on number 8, very, very sweet. Glucose, starch, is one, has no sweetness whatsoever. So, you can eat bread, you can eat pasta, you can eat rice, and you say, well, I never eat sugar. Well, this is pure glucose. Now, glucose, it's funny thing with the science. Just until a few years ago, we were bashing fat, saturated fat is terrible, terrible, oh, creates a problem with the heart, uh, obstructs the blood vessels, uh, you eat fat, you eat cholesterol, and now cholesterol stays in your body, creates problem. Well, you cannot absorb cholesterol. Cholesterol has to break down in your digestive tract into amino acids and fatty acids, and it's being absorbed as like in this state. So, you never ever can absorb cholesterol. Well, how many doctors know? Very few. Although, when I started medicine, we, it was explained to us, but when I talk to young doctors now, that just came from university, they have no clue. So I have no idea what books they are reading and who is brainwashing them now. Because their knowledge is way below what our knowledge was when we came out, I'm talking 40 years ago. Okay, now, cell 
animals can use two different fuels. Plants can use one fuel, only glucose. Cells of animals and human use two fuels. Why? Because their energy is not the consumption or need for energy is not always the same. You have your standard need of energy, which then is supplied through fat, through triglyceride. Triglyceride is three molecules of fat pasted onto glycerol. And when fat is in this state, it means it is uh, meant to be a fuel, cellular, cellular fuel. If your cells do not need it, it is deposited in your adipose tissue and makes you fat. So cell can use this type of fat to produce electricity, which is energy. And then another source, which we have as well, is from glucose. But we don't have deposit for glucose. Our body does not have potatoes, does not have banana. There is no organ that deposits glucose. You have glycogen. Well, glycogen is made by your cells, never leaves the cell. It stays there, and the only way it leaves, if it is used. And again, glycogen is not in all your tissues. The only organs that will have glycogen are muscles, brain, and liver. Glycogen that is in your muscles and in your brain cannot be pushed in a, in a bloodstream. Only liver as a general donor can do this. So why muscles and brain do have this glycogen? Glycogen is glucose bonded to protein. In this form, it cannot be used. Not for energy. It sits there. The bond can be broken only with stress hormones, with steroids. Which means you have to be in a flight, fright and flight situation. You have to be scared for your life. In this case, the bond breaks and glucose becomes your cellular fuel. When you run, work properly, when your body properly runs on fat, every cell has access of 2,000 mitochondria. Brain sometimes 4,000. Depending how much work you do daily, body will adjust, activate as many mitochondria as it needs so it can produce enough energy using fat. But then, if you get caught in something, let's say tiger shows up and now you have to find quickly solution what to do if you have a route to escape or if you have to fight, if you have to fight with what you're going to fight, your brain has to work 500 times faster. Well. In this stressful situation, glucose is being released from glycogen and brain is really working like on steroids. Okay, it is working on steroids. You get rapid ideas. At the same time, glycogen releases glucose in muscles. So now you have a 10 times more power. If this would happen when you are not really in need of this energy, you would start shaking because you are supercharged. You have to release this energy. You release it by work, by doing something. Well, once when we start getting glucose from our diet, our outside source, things change because now glucose becomes nuisance. It shows up in the blood, starts increasing blood level of sugar. The first attempt what it does is try to push it in the cells so it can be used, burned, converted into energy. But cells don't want to accept it. So body has to produce insulin, shoot it in the blood as an irritant that is going to relax the membrane of cells so they can accept the sugar. Well, cells don't like this idea, and if it's happening daily, then they start fighting against it. They start thickening their membranes. Well, what do they need to thicken membranes? They need fat 
and cholesterol, fat and protein, because cellular membranes of animal cells, human included, are made from fat and protein. Combination fat and protein we call cholesterol. So cells will demand that it needs more building materials so it can reinforce its membrane because membranes because it is being irritated by this glucose that is showing up in the blood. So now our level uh, liver may produce um, necessary cholesterol but if you are eating halfway decently and you have some fat, animal fat in your diet then as you are absorbing fat, fat from the intestines cannot be released directly into the blood, it clumps so it will block your arteries, it has to be dispersed so the intestines before they release it, they have to bond it to this person, which is number one protein. In a case, it's needed. So if there is a cellular demand in your body for additional cholesterol, or just to maintain the proper levels of cholesterol, then instead of liver producing it, the fat that is coming from your food in your intestines is before it is being released into the blood is bonded to protein and released as a cholesterol in type of cholesterol that is requested. So the intestine will never produce LDL if it's not necessary or HDL if it's not necessary. There is no such a thing as good or bad cholesterol. Whoever tells you this has absolutely no idea how body works. Unfortunately, majority of doctors are in this level because this is not their fault. The fault is the books. The fault is a Rockefeller Foundation. Rockefellers, through their science, are messing up the whole planet. I'm talking about medicine, but they're involved in much more garbage than this. Science I'm talking about, you will not find in any book. It doesn't exist. Okay, this is a new science. Where did it come from? Well, if I tell you, you will laugh, so I'm not going to talk about it now. But to be able to explain how body really works and how everything we know is a pure garbage, I will have to go into quantum mechanics or quantum physics. I will creep in there bit by bit and show you actually how body really works because everything is just brain's projection of energy in particular frequencies and what you imagine and what you can convince the brain that it sees it will see it will just interpret certain frequency in that way and show it to you but before we go in there, because this is a little, a little bit more difficult to understand, it's much easier to talk about food, food we know. If you are diabetic, especially if you are diabetic from diabetes 2, which we call insulin resistance, every diabetes is insulin resistant, then, but you are on pills, then if you cut down completely. You cannot lower amount of carbohydrate. You have to cut it down. This is where diabet diabeticians make the biggest mistake. They give you metformin or they give you insulin and they tell you, but you have to have a little bit of bread or a little bit of pasta or a little bit of carbohydrate daily. Otherwise, you may go into hypoglycemia. So they are giving you antidote and feeding you poison at the same time. Well, yeah, it works, but it's gradually it's increasing your toxic load of the body, and body is going to show it where in cellular problems. When you show up with bad blood circulation, you become impotent. Uh, your eyes go bad. You get cataract. This is not from UV light as we are being told. This is dehydration on cellular level. 
which has many causes and I will cover these things little by little just to give you more true knowledge. In the meantime, if you want to jump ahead because my videos will come sporadically as I have time, uh, you can go into my blog, blog which is uh, darkovelcek.wordpress.com at the end of the video it's based on and you can just in search engine put any point of interest it can be diabetes it can be uh, cholesterol it can be uh, uh, rheumatism asthma whatever allergy and you will uh, articles will pop out that i wrote about these problems these are not diseases they are symptoms all of them are symptoms and symptom one symptom cannot cause other symptom so diabetes cannot cause blood blood circulation diabetes is caused by, by by insulin insulin is in the blood because of sugar problem with circulation comes when arteries become too tight because the cells became too thick it's a gradual deterioration of the body and it's caused by insulin but the main culprit was the glucose not the glucose that your body made the glucose that you ate that came from outside no animal in nature has access to this glucose only humans why because glucose in the nature is always protected with a shield it is inside of a cellulose so you eat banana if banana is raw it's sweet because it's laced with fructose as i have mentioned fructose is very sweet so it's laced with it mm. so you eat it it gives you zero this is not 666 okay it's zero energy big o nothing you get nothing from fruits only a little bit sweetness and you go back for more and then wherever you poop new fruit can plow out because you are not destroying the sugar load that comes with it in way of carbohydrate in a way of glucose which is encapsulated in cellulose so you cannot digest it and it just passes you and goes up but it remains there as a fuel now for a seed that you also cannot digest and the new plant starts growing we just work symbiotically with the plants so understanding this everybody who tells you i'm fruitarian i live only from from fruits cannot be done you have to have some source of energy which you have two choices either fat or glucose now since it's being debunked that fat is really not causing problems because more and more doctors just basically see that you eat more eggs you eat you actually feel better more pork you eat you actually feel better the fat makes you feel good the problem now is being shifted to fructose sugar but fructose why because when a lot of fructose comes your cells don't don't absorb it even insulin will not force them to go into the cell so the only choice is that liver well urinated but for that you the level has to be pretty high so until it gets there liver will try to process it and it will break it into triglyceride into fat from fat it will produce triglyceride or cholesterol depending what is the cellular demand and uh, what is not being used is being deposited then as a fat but as it is making this fat on one side is also byproduct is uric acid so our body becomes acidic more carbohydrate we eat we become more acidic again contrary to what we are constantly being told that our body becomes acidic because we eat meat meat will never make you acidic it is the carbohydrate it's the glucose that does it not fructose glucose why because whenever you eat fructose 
Fructose, only small amount can be absorbed because normally we have only small amount of glute which is transporting mechanism for sugar. Sugar will not even be brought into your bloodstream without this transporting mechanism. So if you don't eat carbohydrates, cooked or processed, if you basically are meat eater, an occasional fruit eater, which is natural food for omnivores, then no matter how much fruits you eat, you will never increase absorption of sugar because you need to produce more glutes to absorb more sugar. And glute you will not produce because there is no necessity for the sugar. The only thing that will increase production of glute is glucose because when glucose comes in, then body can use it. So it starts producing insulin to force it into cells. As it produces insulin, it starts increasing the level of glute because now this glucose has to be manipulated. And complete disbalance in our body starts occurring. The problems that glucose brings when it comes into our blood are tremendous. And the worst one of them is reprogramming of gene expression. Our cells have to reprogram themselves and genes are going to help them to do so. Genes we have, if you don't know much about genes, you should, well you can go to my site, but also you can check work of Dr. Lipton because he explains it beautifully. And his English is much better than mine. Uh, anyway, so uh, glucose creates havoc in our body and increases the absorption of sugar and once when you have a lot of glute available then you start absorbing a lot of fructose as well and now fructose becomes problem but not bigger than glucose they create all the same problem more you have that it cannot be used it will be reprocessed by liver and liver will turn it because we cannot deposit sugar we cannot deposit glucose so the access will either we have to pee it out for this we need water and to have enough water to do this we need minerals minerals come through salt but we are being told don't eat salt again another bullet in the head okay completely wrong science that we are being told through schools so when glucose comes you start absorbing more sugar of course you start absorbing more fructose now fruits become dangerous for you because uh, fruits some fruits have a lot of fructose like mango for example and uh, uh, it starts producing a lot of fat you become fat your liver becomes fat because it, it converts more fat than it can set into the bloodstream for it to be deposited in adipose tissue so the liver becomes fat Fatty liver syndrome is not a disease, it's a symptom, but it's not caused. The doctor will see fatty liver and say immediately, wow, don't eat eggs, don't eat pork. Well, because we are brainwashed this way. Actually, all this fat in your liver is because your liver is now under a lot of stress, having to convert a lot of glucose into fat and into uric acid. And here comes kidney stones, here come problems with bile duct, here comes problem with arthritis, with rheumatism. It's all completely different than what we are being told. Meat is never a problem. Glucose, glucose, not sugars, glucose. Carbohydrate, that's not sweet. Your bread, your pasta. They say, wow, but look Chinese, they eat rice. And they are healthy on Okinawa, they live a hundred years. Hundred year lifespan is nothing. Every scientist that uses this thing that is inside of the head we call brain, just by observation knows that our lifespan, our life was being made to exist for minimum 600 years. We should not even demonstrate any aging until we are at least 400 years old. But we, we don't behave like this. Why?
because of glucose. Many articles that I wrote are based on this. So, if you have a diabetes, stop. You cannot just take less, just minimize amount of glucose that you are eating. Because your cells will not shift. You are not going to benefit. You are going to go in starvation. And yes, your sugar may drop a little bit. Especially if, if your diabetes too, which um, still your cells are absorbing some of the sugar. So if it doesn't come, you may calm down. But if you are diabetes 1, if you have diabetes 1, if you are shooting insulin, this is not going to help you. The only way to really conquer this is complete abstinence of dietary carbohydrate, which means cooked or processed starches. Why I mention cooked and processed? Because with the heat you break cellulose, but also in grains you have a cellulose, you break the grain, and if you put it in a water, you mix it, the water becomes white. The white thing is glucose. So you don't have to cook it. Just by breaking the seed, you are exposing uh, the glucose to absorption. Animals in nature don't do this. And they have no problems with health. There is not a single chronic problem with it in health with animals in the nature. We humans and animals that we feed, we have this problem. Just look at your dog food if you go to the store. What it says there? The best ones have rice. The crack has soy. Soy is toxic. Even in its purest form is toxic and now uh, genetically modi modified is even worse. Okay, so, of course, you are damaging health of your animal. Some are now buying dog food or cat food based on lentil. No difference, actually worse. Because you have a phytoprotein designed to protect the plants so animals don't eat it. And now you are putting this in your animal as well. So now, on top of the normal diseases of aging in the animals you are going to have accelerated digestive problems with enteritis colitis and stuff like this like humans do we eat beans we eat lentils and then we are bloated up we fart it smells terribly and we say yeah but it's good for us it's healthy how can things that make this in your body be healthy it's, we just don't think. You should not even know that you have intestines. That's how quiet they should be. And you can achieve this only if you eat correctly. I don't want to make the video too long, but think about what I just said. And again, if you have diabetes, bite the bullet and give it a try. If you decide to try it and you have, type, you have type 2 diabetes, the day when you start, when you change your diet, zero carbohydrate, processed or cooked. Uh, actually, I recommend also no food because your sugar absorption is high. It will naturally start diminishing if you stop eating glucose. So, first month or two, don't even have fruits. And you will see... The day you start eating like this, you don't eat pills anymore, your sugar will start coming down and normalized. <coughs> if you have number one diabetes, don't shoot insulin until you check your blood. And then shoot half of normally what you should. Sugar will go down quickly. <coughs> Need water. Okay, this is enough for today. See you next time. Thank you.